Given what we've seen uh, between the U.S. and China and other semi m a over the last couple of years, um, would you expect this deal to move through regulators in either country pretty smoothly? What are you anticipating? That's a, that's a very uh, thorny question. Uh, Cyprus uh, makes some fairly exotic military stuff. Uh, that could give uh, CFIUS problems, and they make, uh, and, and, you know, China, of course, is looking for ways to uh, get even uh, with us on the trade, trade war thing, so they, they could not uh, pass, uh, approve it, and they have to approve it separately, otherwise you can't trade in China. So uh, I look toward a, um, a lengthy um, bureaucratic process coming up. TJ, what should uh, investors in semis be bracing themselves for as this trade war uh, stretches out? Do you think uh, the Trump administration is doing the right thing? And if so, uh, how, how much of an appetite do you have for this prolonged tension? Well, uh, when you're dealing, first of all, it is uh, the word war is, is, is reasonable. It, it's a form of Cold War. Uh, the Chinese have played that, that game unfairly almost forever. Uh, companies like Huawei and others uh, make a practice of uh, stealing or, or manipulating to get Western IP and then using it. Uh, for example, there's one case of a battery company where China just declared that uh, they're going to subsidize the battery industry and if you want a subsidy, your board has to be 100% Chinese. Boom. Uh, the company loses all its directors and becomes a Chinese company. So I, I think forcing the Chinese to deal with us while we still matter a lot to them uh, is, is a reasonable thing to do. And they're tough. And, and uh, President Trump, you know, is tough. He, he, he keeps doing things that surprise me. And I go, wow, he's serious. And I, I eventually I hope the Chinese figure that out and we get back to free trade, which is the most prosperous uh, solution for both sides. So, TJ, just to dig into that a little bit more, semiconductors, it's really one of the main biggest sort of crown jewel, jewels, if you will, in terms of manufacturing sectors here in the U.S., in which the U.S. is still a global leader. The tact that's being taken, the policy is being enacted right now, does that maintain that edge? Um, there's, uh, there's, uh, the ledger's got two sides to it. Uh, we make exotic chips in multiple areas that the Chinese cannot make. And those uh, chips, for example, are the guts of the Huawei router, a lot of it. So if we cut off our supply of chips, that's the, the, the raw, but that's the crude oil that flows to China for their industry, uh, that will hurt them a lot. Uh, on the other hand, what it will do is force them to even be more resolute in developing their own semiconductor industry, which, which will compete against us in the future. Uh, TJ, if I could come back to the deal today. Um, do you think Infineon is the right buyer for the business? They're talking this morning in their conference call about Cyprus being ideally suited to enhance and accelerate uh, their strategy in terms of what they call product to system. Obviously important for them in terms of getting into automotive, uh, IoT. Does it make sense to you? Uh, yeah, actually, if, if, you, if you look at the companies that have a personality that's like Cyprus, you'd, you'd name Intel, you'd name Infineon. You, you name companies that are tightly managed, um, and, and I think except for the distance, which is a problem, uh, it, the match is good. You like the match. And, and for you, sort of the company you founded, any sentimental feelings here this morning, or you're just all business and happy with the price? Well, I have mixed feelings. Of course, you know, I, I own millions of shares, so there will be a nice check in the mail. On the other hand, they... Uh, they just sold my baby for, for a high number of dollars per pound, so that's not that cool for me either. <laughs>